A new study that was just published last week in the Journal of Cosmology and Astroparticle Physics might just be the breakthrough that we've been searching for in our understanding of dark energy. When matter falls into the black hole, that matter is then converted to dark energy, which powers the expansion of the universe. When people ask what was before the Big Bang, maybe the answer is dark energy. The future of dark physics is very bright, and 2024 is sure to go down in the history books for all the things that we have learned about dark energy just this year alone. But what is this stuff anyway? Dark energy is that mysterious 70% of the universe's total energy content that we have absolutely no idea what it is, where it came from. All we know is that it is currently powering the accelerated expansion of the universe. It takes energy to expand the universe faster and faster and faster. Energy needs to be poured into that accelerated expansion. A lot of it. About 70% of the universe's total energy. But what is the nature of dark energy? For the last 20 years, scientists have not been able to answer this question. However, just this last year, in April of 2024, the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument released its first year of data. Now, this is a massive collaboration among over 900 scientists. And some of you on this channel know that my old cosmology professor is actually a team lead on this DESI project. So I actually have second-hand knowledge a little bit about the inner workings of this, just from hearing it from his stories. And it's been an incredible project to get to at least see the development along the way. Desi created the most detailed observational measurements of a map of our universe in three dimensions, specifically two dimensions of space and one dimension of time. This way, we can see how dark energy, the expansion of the universe, is changing over time. For the last 20 years, dark energy was corresponding with Einstein's cosmological constant, with dark energy maintaining a constant energy density throughout the universe's history. However, this first year of DESI data showed that that might not be true, because Rather than dark energy remaining constant over time, the DESI data seems to indicate that it is dynamic, that it is changing, and is actually growing weaker more recently in the universe's history. Now, this by itself was already a monumental discovery that overturned the last 20 years of understanding of dark energy, and would have by itself been a, the most significant development in the understanding of dark energy in years, and already makes 2024 a historic year for dark physics. But that's not the only paper that came out of this data. You see, last week, a new paper was published that was using DESI's data entitled, DESI Dark Energy Time Evolution is Recovered by Cosmologically Coupled Black Holes. So, as that title is suggesting, this paper is going to be characterizing a coupling between black holes and dark energy. Now, this relationship has been explored in previous work. Last year, in 2023, some of you may remember seeing headlines about black holes and dark energy as a series of papers and rebuttals were being published in the astrophysics journals. Uh, looking at the rate of black hole growth over time and how that corresponds with dark energy. Well, this paper that came out last week is of a similar vein, expanding upon this work, but with the utilization of the new DESI data, which was not available last year and is now available as of April of this year. So what did the DESI data show us that we didn't know before? This paper was able to correlate the behaviors of black holes in the universe's history with the DESI data showing the dynamics of how the overall dark energy and expansion of the universe is changing in that same time. And their analysis showed that there is a tight correlation between the overall production of new black holes and the increase of dark energy. 
the vast, vast majority of stars and black holes are formed around this time called cosmic noon. And this study was able to correlate cosmic noon with an increase in the amount of dark energy in the universe and an increase in its expansion rate. They also explain how in the very early universe, the first population, three stars, and the direct collapse black holes would have formed a sort of cosmic floor for the minimal value of dark energy, and it continues to grow from there and then level off in a plateau whenever stars are not going supernova and condensing and collapsing into black holes as much anymore. So you see a direct correlation between the overall rate of production of new black holes, as in how many stars in the universe are collapsing into black holes versus the rate of change of dark energy and the overall expansion of the universe. So this study is proposing that there is a coupling between dark energy fields and matter fields. There is some sort of interaction that can convert one to the other. And this study proposes that what black holes are doing when matter falls into the black hole, that matter is then converted to dark energy, which powers the expansion of the universe. So black holes are converting one form of energy to the other, matter into dark energy. And the study also goes on to elaborate that this would also explain the Big Bang. This would be the same process we've been talking about, only in the Big Bang, it was reversed. You go from dark energy, and that dark energy is then converted into matter during the process of inflation. Not only that, but this kind of conversion, this coupling between dark energy and matter, it also explains the baryon density in the universe being a little bit lower than it is predicted to have been. It explains where this missing matter has gone. It's fallen into black holes and been converted into dark energy. This also alleviates the Hubble tension and explains why the expansion rate of the universe would have been measured differently using the cosmic microwave background data versus using the more recent supernova data. That's because the expansion rate and the overall amount of dark energy was different in the early universe when there were not as many black holes which had been produced yet. Now, this study just came out. I just read the paper yesterday, so this is still very, very new and very exciting, but already I would say that this qualifies in one of my top 10 breakthroughs of the year in 2024, along with DESI, of course. It looks like if these studies prove to be correct and the findings are reified, in DESI's future data, okay? They've only published one year data so far. That data will get better and better and better the more years they go on for their full five year run. So by year three, we should start to have the statistical significance to really say with certainty that yes, there is a relationship between dark energy and black holes. And maybe black holes through some still yet unknown physics are converting matter directly into dark energy and converting matter that you and I are made of into the stuff that's fueling the expansion of space and time in the universe. It's mind-blowing stuff. And it opens a potentially entirely new frontier of physics to explain what is the mechanism that is causing this conversion, this coupling of dark energy fields with baryon fields. And what does this mean for our understanding of what was going on in inflation and potentially before inflation? When people ask what was before the Big Bang, maybe the answer is dark energy. Ironically, the future of dark physics is very bright. And 2024 is sure to go down in the history books for all the things that we have learned about dark energy just this year alone. And I can only imagine what kind of breakthroughs are going to happen in the next five. If you guys couldn't tell, dark energy is one of the most fascinating parts of modern physics for me. I mean, I specifically sought out this class so that I can learn from my professor who is this dark energy expert cosmologist working on the DESI project. So I will definitely be keeping up with this story as it develops. I hope that I can get an interview with my professor for the channel so that you guys can hear from an actual dark energy expert cosmologist about this whole process and what it was like. I mean, he was the first human on Earth. Guys, my professor here, I'm hoping to get him on the channel, is the first human on Earth to see the data for himself from Desi, plot it on a graph and see that dark energy is changing over time. 
the first human to see that himself in the data. I mean, you guys can tell that I am passionate about this. I really am curious about where this field is going. What is dark energy and what does it mean for the universe's future, past, and present? So if you want to come along that journey with me on this channel and learn more about science, history, and debunking pseudoscience every week, please join, subscribe, and hit that bell. Stay curious and keep learning for more.